First time? <laughs> of course it is! I'm a good kid! Pixar has another hit on their hands with Luca. And just like every other Pixar film, it's chocked full of hidden details. Whether it be keeping their traditions of the Pizza Planet truck alive, calling back previous Disney classics, or even hinting at what's to come from the studio, Pixar never fails to keep audiences on the hunt for references. Their Italian sea monster tale Luca has plenty of hidden references. So hop on your Vespa and let's start searching. There it is. That's how we're gonna see the world. One of Pixar's biggest trademarks of their films stems from an inside joke between the animation studio's staff the number A113. This number has appeared as a license plate, graffiti, and has even made itself part of the plot in various Pixar films. Room A113. This is actually a callback to a classroom at CalArts where many of Pixar's top animators got their start. The number can be seen in the final scene of the film where Alberto hands Luca a train ticket so he can travel off to the city to go to school with Julia. If your eyes were getting a bit misty during this scene, you likely missed that Luca's ticket number is A113. You can go to school. <gasps> I can? If the diver's suit that both Luca and Alberto wore during several scenes of the movie looked more familiar to you, that's because you've likely seen it before in another aquatic-themed Pixar movie, Finding Nemo. The diver's helmet has the exact same design as the one where Jacques the Shrimp resides in Dr. Sherman's fish tank. It's fine. I'm not human. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. Another Pixar staple is the Luxo ball. The signature ball doesn't always appear in its original form, as it has shown up in the form of a shield, a merit badge, and a steering wheel. During the film's climactic race scene, there's a blink and you'll miss it shot of the yellow and blue striped ball in its original form lying on the rooftops of Porto Rosso. Wow, it's fast. Alberto's lighthouse bedroom has plenty of hidden goodies for fans to look for, with one of them being a callback to Pixar's beloved 2008 sci-fi film WALL-E. The boot, which WALL-E used to carry the plant over the course of the film, can be seen lying underneath Alberto's hammock. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Luca also drops some secret details to some more recent Pixar films, which we see in the scene where Luca and Alberto are swimming to the shore of Porto Rosso. One of the boats they swim past has the name Elena printed on it. This small detail is a reference to Abuelita Elena. What did he say to you? He was just showing me his guitar. <gasps> Shame on you. The Pizza Planet truck has appeared in all but one of Pixar's films and is a callback to their seminal movie Toy Story. The crew had to get creative with making the vehicle fit in with the film setting of 1950s Italy. Classic human town, pretty cool, right? The animation team decided to remodel the truck into a Piago ape, which makes its appearance during the Porto Rosso Cup sequence. Isn't it great? Wall Lee's boot wasn't the only Pixar throwback hidden in Alberto's room. If you look closely, you'll notice a hat residing near Alberto's hammock, which looks quite similar to the hat that Carl Fredrickson wore during several scenes in the Pixar classic Up. Hi, Mr. Fredrickson! The hat wasn't the only detail that harkens back to Up. If you look closely, during the scenes taking place outside of the town restaurant, you'll find a poster advertising a soda drink. And if you examine it even further, you'll notice that one of the bottle caps on the poster shares a striking resemblance to the grape soda bottle cap that Ellie gave Carl in the beginning of Up. We're in a club now. Donald Duck is one of the Mouse House's most famous and treasured characters. In this scene taking place in Julia's bedroom, a plush toy resembling the classic Donald Duck design sits by the foot of the bed in one of the film's easier-to-catch references. One of the two other secret details hidden in Julia's bedroom is a copy of the original Pinocchio book titled Le Aventure de Pinocchio. This isn't just a reference to the Disney animated classic, it's also a direct allusion to the book's Italian author Carlo Collati, which ties directly into the film's Italian Riviera theme. Benvenuti a Porto Rosso! The second of two Pinocchio cameos takes place during a dream sequence, where Luca envisions him and Julia flying over Porto Rosso, before the camera pans down to reveal Pinocchio waltzing through the Italian streets, alongside the lame fox and the blind cat. This also could be tied to the fact that, in their respective films, both Luca and Pinocchio dream of being a real boy. I'm a real boy! The train sequence had several other secret features, including the number 04608 on the front of the train that Luca and Julia depart on. That number isn't just any old random number, it's actually the zip code of Pixar's animated studio. Come on, Alberto, the train's gonna leave. 
Pixar sure does love their numerical references, and they took advantage of the opportunities presented by the film's finale. In yet another fun detail, you can see the number 1200 PA by the train doors, which actually refers to the studio's street address, 1200 Park Avenue. In the streets of Puerto Rosso, you'll also be able to find posters advertising many films stemming from classic Italian cinema. But one of the posters is a callback to one of Disney's most famous aquatic-themed movies, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which followed a team of deep-sea explorers on the search for, you guessed it, sea monsters. Watch out, Luca. Everyone in Puerto Rosso pretends to believe in sea monsters. An album cover with the name Nicolo Pietra can be found in Julia's room. While casual audiences might not think twice about the name, hardcore Pixar fans might catch that this is a reference to Pixar animator and voiceover artist Nick Pitera, who initially got his start making Pixar-themed music videos on YouTube and eventually went on to work for the studio. Pretty awesome. Pretty cool. He even provided his voice for the Triple Dent Gum jingle from Inside Out. Triple Dent Gum. No! One of Pixar's traditions is to have the directors of their films voice a character in their own film. Brad Bird voiced Edna Mode in The Incredibles, while Pete Docter supplied his vocals to Kevin in Up. Just to name a few, Luca's director Enrico Casarosa provided his voice to the unnamed mustache man wearing a cap, who can be found sitting at a table in some of the film's town square sequences. <laughs> Casarosa also included allusions to his first Pixar short film, La Luna. Julia's father, Massimo, closely resembles the fatherly figure in La Luna, and both films have plot lines that deal with a child's curiosity about the stars. To top that off, the main child from La Luna makes an appearance as a drawing in the end credits. Alberto, I'm coming for you! Another allusion to a Pixar short film appears in a climactic moment in the race sequence where Alberto rushes to Luca, holding a blue umbrella to protect his true identity. The pairing of Alberto's sole blue umbrella amongst an ocean of less colorful umbrellas appears to be a visual nod to the 2013 short film The Blue Umbrella, which features the eponymous item amongst a swarm of gray umbrellas. What's that? It's just the greatest thing that humans ever made. The Vespa. Hidden Mickeys have become a trademark of Disney's. Luca has one of its own, albeit its origins are a bit different. When animating the dream sequence following Luca and Alberto riding a Vespa, Casarosa and his crew noticed that one of the cloud formations resembled a hidden Mickey. Thus, they decided to keep the hidden Mickey clouds in the film. I am Marco Levisconti, five-time winner of the Porto Rosso Cup. A potential Ratatouille reference can be seen during Ercole Visconti's entrance. As Ercole and his lackeys sit outside of a restaurant, you might catch the restaurant's name, Gustosa. This is most likely a reference to the famous chef Gusto from Ratatouille, who owned the restaurant at the heart of the story in Ratatouille. Who wants to watch me eat a big sandwich? Luca continues Pixar's trend of providing a visual scavenger hunt for film fans all across the world. Enrico Casarosa has even confirmed that there is a hidden reference to Pixar's next film, Turning Red. Have you spotted it yet? What was your favorite Disney reference in Luca?